In this video, I want to talk about two things that are related to painting your projects. The first is the age-old question of whether to roll or to spray. And the second is a tweak on the process I've grown accustomed to, which is to use primer, then putty, then another layer of primer, and then two coats of enamel. I've been told that you can replace that second coat of primer with latex and I wanted to see if it would work. But before we apply some primer on the plywood, I wanted to cover up those plywood edges with some of this non-drip epoxy from Davies. Ordinarily, I would just use some putty to cover plywood edges, but recently I tried this stuff on a metal project and it finished so smooth that I wanted to see if it would work on plywood too. So after that epoxy hardened, I sanded it down and it was time to apply some primer. So this is Davies water-based wood primer. Typically, I do prefer to use water-based products and that's because I don't like the odor of oil-based finishes. Also, water-based products tend to dry faster, which means I can get the project done faster. I also make sure to apply some wood primer to the plywood edge just to see how well that epoxy holds up in terms of covering up those edges. And then once the primer is dry, I proceed to sand and get ready to apply the next layer. Here I'm using masonry or concrete putty, which I find has the best consistency in terms of its um, spreadability, if that's even a word. But I just find that it spreads the easiest for me. Also, that first coat of primer really helps to highlight the areas that you need to focus on in terms of the gaps or the gouges that you need to really focus on. And then when that's dry, we sand again and you have to do this for every layer. Oh, and also I'm using 320 grit sandpaper only because this Cubitron sandpaper I'm using from 3M is really good. And when I use the 240, I feel like I'm taking off too much material. Anyway, so these two pieces at the bottom of your screen, they're going to get a second coat of water-based wood primer, while the two pieces at the top of your screen, we're going to apply some latex on it. Now when you think about it, it actually makes sense that you can use latex because as I said earlier, I used masonry putty which is typically used on concrete and latex is also typically used in concrete. So now the latex is actually adhering to the masonry putty as opposed to the wood itself. Now I'll say this about the latex, it did a much better job in terms of covering up that wood and you can tell even from just the video that the two top pieces on your screen the coverage is really a lot better than the two bottom pieces where you can still see some of that plywood showing through. The other thing about the latex is it does a really good job in giving you both a tactile and visual indicator of where you need to focus that sanding. Like in this piece, this is the wood primer and you'll see there's a lot of different shades going on but if you touch it after you sand it, it's all pretty smooth. On the other hand, on the latex, you can both feel and actually see where it's still a little bit rough and you need to sand a bit more. And I really like that about using latex as your third coat because you get, again, both a tactile and visual indicator of where you need to sand some more. And here I'm just showing all of those different marks that really visually tell you that you need to sand some more. Okay, now it's time for the top coats. So the two pieces on the right are gonna get rolled and the two pieces on the left are gonna get sprayed. The two pieces on top of your screen have a base coat of latex and the two pieces on the bottom of your screen have a base coat of wood primer. So what's interesting here is how the enamel reacts to that latex base coat and I'll show it after this part here. You can see from this close-up that there's quite a bit of what I can only describe as pooling over that latex. And when you compare that to the version with the wood primer, there's not as much. You can also see from these pictures that the enamel is really not sitting very well on top of that latex. And when we compare that to the version with the wood primer, you can see that the enamel is really sitting a lot better on this one. I usually like to do a minimum of two coats, so I sanded the version with the wood primer first. And the reason I did this is because even if I did the one with the latex first, it took a lot longer to dry. Here I am just applying a second coat to both pieces. And you can see I could have actually waited a little bit longer for this latex version because it was still a little bit tacky. But I wanted to get this project done, so I went ahead and just did it. And then it was time to use the paint sprayer. Now, 
I own this old Ozito paint sprayer and I'm sure if I had a better one I would have gotten better results but this is what I had so I went with it. Okay let's look at the results. This is the sample with wood primer and enamel applied with a roller. And this is also why I went with black because black is unforgiving. Now you can see it's not exactly a perfectly flat application but it's not as bad as the sample with the latex base layer where the waves are really apparent and you can see how prominent it is in these shots. This is actually the sample that I like the least. Now let's look at the samples where I use the paint sprayer. Now again, I don't have the best paint sprayer and this is probably why this video is only useful to DIYers like me with crappy paint sprayers. But I do think the finish is noticeably better all things considered. Now the one with the latex layer, I don't think it's as nice. It's got this cloudy splotches going on with it. And just like the version with the roller, the enamel also took longer to dry. So for me, while technically replacing that second primer layer with latex worked, the experience of doing it and the end product isn't as nice, at least in my opinion. Now, in terms of rolling or spraying, there is no doubt in my mind that if I get a better sprayer and I get the viscosity right and I get all my techniques right, that I will get a supremely better result over using a paint roller. Having said that, all of the setup and cleanup that goes with using a paint sprayer just doesn't make me feel like it's worth the effort at this point at least when I compare it to the results versus my old Ozito paint sprayer. So for now I think I'm gonna stick to the roller because it's more than acceptable for me for my DIY projects.